It might be freezing and snowing outside here in Chicago, but inside it is warming up because we are kicking off the spring DIY season today with some awesome Easter DIYs. I love these. They are so adorable and really easy to recreate. So let's hit it. One of my absolute favorite things to make for Easter are these felt carrots because they are so easy and so cute. Start with a piece of felt and a rectangle shape and the larger your rectangle, the larger your carrot. Draw a line of hot glue down the long side and then you're gonna roll it into a cone shape. Make sure everything is adhered there and then we are going to cut straight across the top to create just a little cone that's gonna make the base of our carrot. Now, I like to stuff it with polyfill, but you could honestly use anything you have on hand. You could even put tissue paper in there. You can get creative. Then I am taking a piece of green felt, creating some long little fringes here, and then I'm using hot glue to glue it around to create that top little area. You could also use raffia if you have that on hand, or even green Dollar Tree jute twine. Then with the mixture of hot glue as well as some twine, I'm going to hook that stem into the top of my carrot, and these are good to go. I have used a variety of different materials for this as well. So you can go traditional here with the orange felt. You can also use different fabrics and they also mix in really well if you already have some carrots, but you wanna make a fuller arrangement like I did here. I started with adobo, I got a Hobby Lobby. I mixed in some of these plaid ones as well as the ones I made. And this is so quick and easy to put together. So cute for a dining room table and it won't take you very long at all. If you love those carrots, you will love this project too. We're starting with a grapevine wreath. This is a 12 inch one I got from Walmart, as well as some boxwood picks also from Walmart that you can get for around a dollar. I think they just raised their prices, so it's like a dollar 28, but still comparable to Dollar Tree and very good quality. After I cut them apart, I went through and tied them onto the wreath form with some jute twine. It took me a couple tries to get it to lay where I wanted, but once I got the hang of it, I got going around the circle to completely cover the wreath. I believe I used six different picks and that was able to fill up my wreath. Then you can leave it just as is if you just want a new boxwood wreath. This is a very economical, affordable way to do it. And I also used some hot glue to make sure that all my pieces stayed. Now to make it Easter, I added some Dollar Tree carrots with some hot glue around the outside. You could also tie on the carrots if you want them to be removable. This thing looks super high end and it's quick and easy to put together. It's well under 15 bucks compared to what they sell them for at like Kirkland's like 40 plus dollars. This next one is one of my favorite Kirkland's dupes I've ever done for Easter, and that is this fun neutral bunny pillow. Now Dollar Tree bunny shapes are the perfect size and shape for this, but if not, you could easily print one out and cut it to use it as a stencil. I'm just gonna trace my wood piece here on a piece of white felt. This is a little bit thicker felt I got from Michaels, which I will link down below. It holds up a little better on the pillow, but you can use Dollar Tree felt. It's just a little see-through. Then I'm cutting down some ticking fabric I had in my stash. You could easily get this at any local craft store or you could use what you have on hand. And after I've got my two squares cut to size, I'm putting them right sides together so I can glue them together. For my pillows, I like to use strong Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks because that will work with wood, metal, even fabric. And with my throw pillows, they're not getting a ton of use so I don't have to wash them as much as I would a pillow that I'm using every day or something on my bed. So I'm just using the hot glue but you could absolutely sew it if you want. I'm leaving a little bit of a space at the bottom so I can stick my hand in, flip it right side out, and then I am going to stuff it with some polyfill I have from a leftover pillow. But before I do that, I am gluing on my bunny. I find it's a lot easier to glue it on in chunks like I'm doing here and also glue it on before you stuff the pillow. Then that way you've got a flat surface to push against instead of the rounded one you're gonna get when you stuff it. Then I'm gonna stuff it fully to the fluff level of my liking, and then I'm going to create a little faux seam at the bottom, so folding it over and gluing it together. Now here is where you can easily burn yourself, so get yourself some of those Dollar Tree little finger protectors so you don't burn your fingers. This is so cute, so easy to throw on a couch or a little display and add some Easter flair without it being too much, especially if you're a neutral fan. Another great way to use those Dollar Tree wood cutouts is by staining them and then adding some fun embellishments. So I stained mine here with the color Briar Smoke and because of the fact that I had a little bit of wood glue overflow, I decided to do a two-tone. So I put a piece of masking tape across the center and I'm just painting the top to cover up those little blips in white and I've got this fun little two-tone bunny. 
I added a Dollar Tree pom-pom. You can get these anywhere, but just to cover that piece that hangs out because the back side, which is originally the front side, is 3D. So that covers that up. And then I finished it off with this Easter blessings, which I will have available over on my blog for you if you want to recreate this. I just cut it so that it would be the width of that little line and voila, so cute, so festive and only a dollar 25 can't beat that. I also wanted to share if you have the YouTube app and you're not on your computer, this is how you get to the link. So you're under the video and you see that little more button, click that, it's gonna expand it and then you can click to expand again. YouTube's app for some reason hides this in the comments. So that's how you find the links. And then if you're looking to comment, just scroll down a little bit through the suggested videos and you will see the comments at the bottom. That's how you can let me know what your favorite project is. This project was a huge hit on Instagram and TikTok last year, and it is these fun garlands. So you're gonna need a doll needle as well as some foam eggs. These are from Dollar Tree, but you can get them a variety of places. Also, disclaimer, I filmed this originally when I was pregnant with Finn, so this is an oldie but a goodie. Just wanted to throw that out there so nobody thinks I've been hiding a pregnancy on you because I am not pregnant. <laughs> I went ahead and strung up everything on jute twine. I did a fun pattern with all of the eggs and some of the fallout as you're seeing is normal. But then all you need to do is hang that up and it's a fun little pop of color. And if you're afraid the glitter is gonna get everywhere like I am, I went outside and sprayed the whole thing with either a sealant or hairspray and you'll be good to go. Another super easy way to get cute pillows is to use placemats. So I found these last year in the Target dollar spot, but everywhere, even Dollar Tree has super cute placemats. Just find some that you like and make sure you grab two because you'll need two placemats per pillow. Use the same process I showed you before, gluing around the outside, but instead of flipping it inside out with this one because it had embellishments, I just went ahead and glued it right side out. Stuffed it the exact same way, and then I just went ahead and sealed the bottom super duper easy. This would also be a really cute project to take some heat transfer vinyl and add a monogram or your last name or honey bunny, something to the corner. So quick and easy. You can make these in five minutes. Another super affordable way that I like to update my decor every season is by using printables. Now, if you are not new to Whiskey & Wit, you are not new to my free printables, but if you're new here, I have a ton of free printables over on my blog. I've got a wide variety for Easter from religious to non-religious, bunnies to more spring feel. So head on over there and you can download the pack with 20 plus free printables that you can print out to size to your favorite frame. These are from Walmart. I will link them down below. They're my favorite. And and they add such fun pizzazz and all you have to do is switch out the printable every season. Easy peasy. Up next, we're gonna make a fun Easter reverse canvas. So you're gonna start with a canvas, whatever size you want. This is an eight by 10 that I got from Michaels. And the reason I went with the Michaels for this one instead of a Dollar Tree one is the outside border is a lot thicker. You're gonna find that too if you find them at Hobby Lobby, things like that. They're a little bit more expensive, but when you're doing a reverse canvas, definitely spending a little bit more on the canvas will help. Once you get the staples out, like I'm showing here, just pop them up with a flathead screwdriver and then use some pliers to get them out. Then you've got a really nice thick border that is going to look a little bit nicer around your canvas. So I'm using dark walnut stain, staining the entire thing and making sure that that dries. Now on that canvas, I used infusible ink for this project and I really like how it turned out. Now, if you don't have infusible ink, you could absolutely do one of two things. One, cut it out on heat transfer vinyl and just apply it that way. Or you could also print out this image and then use a light behind it to trace it with a Sharpie. Then you don't have to worry about doing anything cutting or anything like that. You could just go ahead and hand trace it. I also decided to cut out a pair of glasses in a pretty lavender color for Easter just to put it on my bunny. Then to apply it, I'm just trimming that canvas and I'm putting my frame down just so I know where to apply it. And I'm gonna press it the same way that I would press anything else with my heat press. Now with the infusible ink, you have to have a heat press. You cannot use an iron. If you're using heat transfer vinyl, you can use an iron. So that's another thing to keep in mind too. You just have to have something that can get above 385. I really just like that it sunk in to the fabric instead of being on top. And then all I had was the 3D version of the glasses. Then all you have to do is take a staple gun, staple it to the back and trim any excess. And how cute is this bunny? I love this thing so much. It is one of my favorites of all time. And those purple glasses are just beyond cute.
I know a lot of you decorate with religious things for Christmas and Easter, so I like to give you options because I have some of these in my house as well. I stained this Dollar Tree cross that you can find in the Crafter Square section, added a simple He is Risen across the center, and then I added a beaded strand to it just to give it a little bit of a contrast. And I usually buy my beads either at Michael's or Amazon. I will link those down below. Once everything is tied, I just added a quick little tassel to the end. I just did that by wrapping the jute twine around my hand, tying off the top, and then kind of cutting the little fringes. And then this thing is beautiful on my vase that I got at a local boutique here. I just wrapped it around, let it sit, and you could also just leave it stained. You don't have to add the words. That looks beautiful as well. I saw this project on Pinterest a couple years ago and I wanted to try it. And so I took some jute twine as well as some of those wood beads and I got a multi-pack so I had pieces that would go from largest to smallest. Now as you see here it's starting to resemble a carrot and so I just put a variety of them in order onto the same strand because we are about to dye these and it just was easy to put everything on one strand, dye it, and then go from there. So I'm tying these off so they look like cute little carrots and I'm giving myself enough slack so that it will be able to be dunked in the writ dye. Then I'm taking a glass container and I'm mixing up the writ dye in accordance to the package. The more dye you add, the deeper your color is gonna be, so it's really personal preference. I did like two cups of water and then just a little bit of the writ dye. I didn't do anything too crazy, maybe, I don't know, three, four tablespoons. Then I am dunking those in there and taping the jute twine to the side so then that way it doesn't sink on me. I let them sit for 10 minutes, dunked them again, let them sit for another 10 minutes, and then I pulled them out and set them on a paper towel. Then I created some cute little tassels with some green jute twine that you can get in the automotive section at Dollar Tree, but you could also use raffia or even felt. Tied that on the ends and how cute. These are so great to add to just a little vignette. Super simple and small, but they look really fun with any Easter setup. I love to grab these white appetizer plates when I'm in Dollar Tree and make them over for my seasonal tablescape. For Easter, I decided to do this really cute bunny that I got as a part of a pack over from Design Bundles. So this is one of the only ones in this video that isn't a whiskey and wet cut file, but you can head over there. They've got a lot of cute things and I really like buying things that I can't design myself from Design Bundles. After I weeded it on my permanent vinyl, I'm just applying it to the center of my plate and voila, I made enough of these to cover my entire table. And the nice thing is with the vinyl being permanent, but not totally on there, you can remove it and use the same plate for different seasons. And just a friendly reminder that this is no longer food safe, but it makes a really cute decor piece. So the mystery box around Easter last time had these tumbling tower blocks from Jamie at the Crafty DIY Guy, so I decided to make a Scrabble ledge. I started by laying them out to figure out how long I wanted my ledge to be, and I was going to need some for the bottom as well as the back. Then I also got out some of these little ornaments or little decorative embellishments. I did Easter eggs as well as some bunnies, and I just wanted to figure out how big my ledge needed to be for them to sit up. Then I used some Dollar Tree super glue to hook all of my pieces together. And if you wanted to do this a lot easier without having to do the tumbling tower blocks, just get yourself two square dowels from your hardware store. You can cut them down to size and it would save you the steps of hooking them all together. Then once I had my two pieces, I glued them together so that I had my ledge. And then it was time to stain it because I didn't want all of my eggs to be stained. I stained it in a darker stain, briar smoke, and it did pop apart on me when I was staining it. So if you use the dowel rod, you won't have that issue. Then I grabbed a variety of Easter fun, bright springy colors and painted my eggs two purple, two blue, two yellow, and two pink. Then I cut out letters just because it was easier than hand drawing it. But if you don't have a Cricut, no worries, just use stickers or you could go ahead and use a paint marker. But I put Easter across all of my eggs as well as two plain bunnies. And then it was time to lay them out and glue them to the back of the holder. Once everything was where I wanted it, this thing was ready to go. And I very much love this. I was inspired by something I saw on jane.com. I love that daily deal site, but sometimes it's more fun to make it yourself. And that was the case with this one. 
Here's a fun vinyl hack that you can do with the Dollar Tree vinyl to keep it really affordable while also not needing a Cricut. So I loved this floral vinyl last year, so I decided to take one of these bunny cutouts. You could use literally any wood cutout. It could be an egg, it could be a bunny, it could be a chick, whatever you are feeling. I cut it down to size and then went through and traced it. Now, when you're tracing on the back of the vinyl, you wanna make sure that you are putting the side that you wanna stick it down onto down. So here, I wanted the face to be the back essentially, but you just wanna make sure that you're paying attention to the directions. If not, you will get it all cut out and it will be backwards. Then I just cut it out and then peeled it off and stuck it just like it was a sticker. Now Dollar Tree vinyl is pretty forgiving so you're able to reposition it. And then I had this other piece from the mystery box to mount it onto but you could just add a little kickstand on your own. And I thought this was beautiful, very understated with the bunny, like you can tell what it is. But really the floral pieces shine, I love the pink and the navy, so cute. I've gotten a lot of comments from you guys that you want to see more wood projects and I am happy to oblige because I love wood projects. So I was inspired by this Kirkland sign and I decided to use some scrap wood to make it into a tray. So I started by taking my scrap wood piece and tracing with just a spray paint cap. I just found whatever I had that was circular and I created a little stencil essentially in the corner. Then using that piece on all the other corners, I went around and marked it so that I could use my jigsaw and make this curved edge around all of it. Now, if you want to just do a regular rectangle, you could easily do that, but I just thought this added some nice, fun character to the board, and it also helped me clean up those rough edges from this scrap piece of plywood. After I gave it a really good sand with my orbital sander, I went through and stained it with this dark walnut stain just to give it a similar look to that inspo piece. And then I used my Cricut Maker 3, but you could use any Cricut that you have to create a stencil that mimics the inspiration. So I just like to use permanent vinyl as a stencil. You can also use Quick Cover from Dollar Tree. There are a ton of different options on how you can stencil and I've got videos on it. So whatever you like to do, the thing that I think is a non-negotiable though is this paper transfer tape from Expressions Vinyl. Now it has been going in and out of stock, I hear you guys, so there is an Amazon version of it, essentially a dupe. I will link that down below if you can't get the Expressions Vinyl kind, it will work very similar. But it's gonna allow you to apply the stencil, which you have weeded backwards, onto your sign and not have to worry about it ripping up paint or not releasing your stencil. And before I go through and paint, I like to seal everything with a coat of Mod Podge. This is just going to help with bleeding. If I were to paint the sign instead of stain it, I could do an initial coat of that paint color, but you can't really do a sealing coat of stain. So that's why I use the Mod Podge. Then to get the color on there, I'm using white acrylic paint that I am applying with a disposable makeup sponge. This is one of my favorite ways to do it. I dab up and down, so I'm not pulling paint in any direction. And then when it's about 50% dry, I am peeling off that piece of permanent vinyl that I used as a stencil to reveal my design. The breakaway of the vinyl that you're seeing here is totally normal. You could just take it piece by piece. And then I'm also going through and removing any of those little bits within any of the letters. Then my last step was to add some handles and seal it. So these handles are from Menards. I went through, figured out where they needed to be, and then I had to mark so I could drill my holes so that I could put the screws through. And then you can just simply tighten them because these are cabinet poles that I just get from their clearance section. Whenever I see cool ones on clearance, I grab them, I keep them in my stash, and then I can put them on trays like I'm doing here. I also sealed this with a polycrylic, which is a indoor water-based sealant. I like the Verithane version, which I will link for you. It just really helps, especially if you're gonna be putting stuff on your tray. But if you're just gonna put this on the wall like a sign, you don't need to seal it. It's gonna be just fine. This time of year, so many dollar sections and even Hobby Lobby, Joann's, Michael's, all the places have wood cutouts of bunnies and eggs. And so here are some fun ideas that you could do with them. You could easily just paint them a solid color and add a fun little fluffy tail. Or you could go with my favorite technique, which is staining them. I really like that you can still see the wood grain and I did a variety of different stain colors. So they all looked like wood bunnies, but they had a little bit of variation. These came from Target and I liked the two different ones here facing different directions, but they are great with free printables. 
You could choose to add the fluffy tail or forego that option, totally up to you. And you can also add fun details like these ears. I just added a little bit of pink acrylic paint and then used my finger to buff it out so it looked like the innards of the ears of bunnies, but without it being too harsh of pink and you won't really see the lines. Another option is to add some tissue paper as well. So I decided to Mod Podge this on. So I just went through, kind of marked where it needed to go, and then I trimmed it down and then added it to the egg. So one side will be stained, the other side will be this really fun Easter gingham. This tissue paper came from Dollar Tree, but you can get cute tissue paper anywhere. You could also add fabric doing the same thing. Give yourself a thin coat of Mod Podge, make sure you push it out without ripping it. You just wanna do that carefully and then trim off any excess. With the tissue paper, I like to go back through with one thin coat of Mod Podge over the top so it's not going to have any issues season to season, especially when you pack it away. And these are so fun and festive and easy to put together. All right, now I've got some really quick and easy Cricut projects for you. And the best part is all of the SVGs or fonts are free for you to grab so you can recreate these yourself with minimal effort. First up is this Happy Easter sign, and this sign came from Dollar Tree, but you could easily size this to be larger and put it on a large board for a porch sign. You can even stencil it on. I just cut out the Happy Easter, and then I applied it directly to this sign with my Expressions Vinyl Clear Transfer Tape. Now you've seen the paper transfer tape a lot, but I also wanted to share the clear because it does work if your surface is not super, super delicate. This is so fun. The understated bunny cutout is so cute and it's really nice to add height to a setup. This next one is a pretty easy project to pull off, but it packs such a big punch and meaning behind it. So I grabbed one of these Dollar Tree wood crosses and I decided to give it a weathered texture and look. So I used this weathered oak by Varathane Sinane. Once that was all dry, I brought it in and used my Cricut just to cut out this simple He Is Risen, and I applied it across the horizontal part of the cross. I finished it off with some jute twine at the bottom, and this thing, I love it so much. It's one of my favorite pieces of Easter decor, and it's just, like I said, so simple, but so pretty. Next up, we're grabbing some utensils. You can find these at Walmart, Dollar General, but I opted for Dollar Tree, but you could find these really anywhere. And the first thing I did was tape off the ends so I could add some color. To give it this paint dipped look, I painted one purple and one pink, and I just made sure that masking tape or painter's tape was all the way around so that I got a seamless straight line. Then we're taking some of these ornament decorations from Dollar Tree as well. I painted my carrots and my bunnies and you could do whatever motif you want there. And then I cut out the words hippity hoppity in the free font white love from defont.com. I will link it down in the description. And then I just use some hot glue to stick my little pieces down. My last step was to tie them together with some cute ribbon also from Dollar Tree. And these are a quick and easy way to add some pizzazz to your kitchen. I think I'm gonna hang these on my tea towel ladder this year. This next one is a Whiskey Craft Buddy favorite, these directional arrows. I have so many variations of these and I have a whole blog post that is a roundup of all of these cut files. So if you're interested in that, you can bop over and grab those for every season. Now you can either use them on these reception arrows that I like to paint to neutralize them, or you can use one of Dollar Tree's large wood arrows, but I made one with white and then black vinyl, this Cottontail Family Antiques Flea Market. And I like that it doesn't scream Easter, so you could leave it up through spring. I also did a arrow in black, and I added some more of those little embellishments for a carrot patch. So a couple options for you, dependent on your style. Every spring, I fall in love with the personalized Easter baskets, and then I see the price and I almost fall over. So I decided to make Finn a personalized one, but on a budget because it really only gets used one day and then it's like, where's it even at in my house? So I decided to use some heat transfer vinyl. You wanna make sure that you put the shiny side down. And then I use that same white love free font from Defont. I'm using my little Cricut mini press to hook the name onto the ear. I'm using the medium setting peeling it back and this thing is good to go. Then you're ready to fill it with whatever goodies that you want and it's not as big as you would find at like Pottery Barn, those things are massive, but really for a toddler, it's hard to carry around anyway. So I just filled it with some books, bubbles, some sidewalk chalk, and it was ready to go. 
This one is one of my absolute favorites that I have ever made for Easter because I think it just turned out so cute. I used a mini Dollar Tree cutting board, but you could find cutting boards anywhere. This one's from Walmart and I think I might do a large version of it this year. I decided to stain it and then I also needed to add a hole to the top so I could add some ribbon. So I just used my clamp and carefully drilled a hole through the top. The hole is optional, but I wanted to be able to put some jute twine through it. Then I measured my piece and cut my decal again. This is a free one over on my blog. It will all be in the Google folder for you with freshly baked carrot cake, grab a slice. So this would be cute larger for a kitchen as well. And then I just painted all of my carrots and bunnies and added them to a variety of projects last year and it worked out so well. So then here's that jute twine that I wanted to tie through and I'm adding just a Dollar Tree little whisk just to make it feel a little bit more kitcheny and I also glued the handle down so it wouldn't move on me and fall over the words so that's a nice way to fake that effortless look but no it's not going to move on you if you're hosting for Easter this year, grab yourself some of these fun decorative plates to make a fun garland. All you have to do is take a hole punch, put some holes in either side, and then string some jute twine, yarn, whatever you have through. And I like to do the two holes because a bulk of your jute twine can be behind your plate. So cute. And you could also add letters with your Cricut if you want. I found this bunny wreath form last year and I was inspired because of a mystery box to use this nautical rope from Jamie, the crafty DIY guy, to create a fun bunny wreath. So the first thing I did was separate it because it is pretty thick with the three strands together. So I pulled it apart so I had three smaller strands. Then I started by doing a triple knot of one end in between the two ears of this Dollar Tree wreath form. And if you can't find a bunny wreath form like this, you could easily grab a circular one and then use some floral wire or whatever else you have on hand to make the ears. You could also do a wire hanger. Then I am starting to wrap around the entire wreath form so that it is going to be a nice white linen circle. And then I'm also wrapping it around up and down both of the ears. So then that way the whole outline is going to be that white nautical rope. Once I get back around to the center of one ear, I am tying it off and then I am heading up the other side of the ear just to make sure things don't unravel or get loose on me. I tied it a couple times as I went. And then I thought it was a little blah, so I started by thinking, okay, I'm gonna add a bow, but then I decided to do some hand cut felt flowers. So you can start with a rectangular shape and the larger your rectangle, the larger your flower. And we're gonna start by creating a circular piece or oval sized piece. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then we're gonna cut about a quarter inch to a half inch strip. Again, doesn't have to be perfect, but we're gonna spiral it around our circle, making sure to leave about a quarter size piece of felt at the bottom. Once you get there, then we are going to start with that short end and some hot glue and start to wrap it around. Once you make it all the way around to the end, you can use that hot glue and your little quarter size piece at the end to finish off your flower. And voila! I ended up trimming the flowers down to make it look more polished. And then I used some green felt that I had in my stash to create some leaf shapes. I took some hot glue and pinched the bottom part together to make the leaf kind of pop a little bit. So it looked a little more 3D. And then I arranged all of my variety of flowers plus my leaves to one side of the head of my bunny to make it look kind of like I was wearing a flower crown. I also made sure to do a dry fit of everything just so then that way I wasn't gluing things down realizing that's not where I wanted it and had to pull it up. I am so happy with how this turned out. It is so cute and all I had to do to hang it was just add a little bit of jute twine through one of the back loops of that nautical rope and it is super cute on its own. You could have it be a shelf sitter or hung on the wall but I am going to hang it over my boxwood wreath that I got at Home Goods. So fun and festive. I love the flowers so much. I love using unfinished wood in so many DIYs and these are no exception. These are some whimsy carrot tags. Now you can either do this on the large carrot that Dollar Tree sells or some of these ornaments. And I decided to go ahead and paint it traditional with the green top and the orange carrot part. Make sure to get all of your edges. And then I decided to go with a whimsy paint effect. So I mixed a little bit of white with the orange that I put onto the carrot and I used a paintbrush to create a variety of little polka dots. 
Once the polka dots dried, I used some paint markers to add some effects to make it pop even more. So I'm starting on the outside with a black paint marker and I'm just tracing the entire outside. Now some of these edges, as you can see, I didn't connect and that kind of added to the fun whimsy, I think. And then I added a couple little dashes on either side and squiggles on the top green area just to make sure that that didn't look too blah. Then the second step was to go through and add kind of a reflective piece on all of my bubbles. So I'm just making a little squiggly. And then I added a couple additional pieces at the top, which really made it pop. Once that's done, you can add the name by adding stickers, writing it by hand, or doing what I did in cutting out a decal on a vinyl cutting machine. I again use that White Love font and I really like it. I use it on a lot of things for names. You could also do that same technique on things like eggs and use them on tags or hang them up as garlands in your home. Another idea for those painted carrots, since you get a pack of a decent amount, is taking some hot glue, gluing it on one of these Dollar Tree tags that I already had stained, and you've got a really quick and easy tiered tray sign. I also love to take these wood cutouts and paint them. I did some bunny faces, and then I also did that whimsy cartoonish painting on some Easter eggs for name cards or place settings for Easter. Just write the name, put it right on top of the plate, and you are good to go. This carrot patch sign was a winner last year. So many of you recreated it and shared pictures. You're going to want some of those small carrots as well as one of these big carrots, and we're going to paint them the same way as we did in the last project. But for our carrots, we're going to use some wood filler so that it doesn't look like it needs to be hung because we're going to stick it on the sign. I just take some of it's like putty and you put it on the front and the back of the hole, make sure it's full, let it totally dry, and then sand it down flat, and then you can paint or stain right over it. Make sure you get wood filler that says it's stainable if you're looking to stain over the top. Then we're adding all the details and then I decided to use a little acrylic paint bottle to make the polka dots for the larger one just to make sure it was more symmetrical. Same process including the outlines. And then I added this cute little welcome to our carrot patch decal. Now you could omit this, you could just do the carrots on a wreath, but I like the cute little welcome to our carrot patch. I glued on the small little carrots as well, and you can also take it one step further and add your family's names. So if there's four of you, five of you, etc., you can put the names on the carrots as well. This is so cute, one of my favorites, and you definitely would not think it's a Dollar Tree DIY. I've been doing Kirkland's dupes for a while now, and this one was a quick and easy one that I did last year to dupe this $140 piece of Easter art because that's just crazy to me. I grabbed one of these wood canvases. It's a 12 by 12 from Walmart. You can get them for under 10 bucks, and I stained it in the color Briar Smoke. Once it was dry, I took my printout to essentially add my artwork to the picture. Now, this is a free printable that you can get over on my blog, and I just printed it as a poster over at Walgreens. My local Walgreens is always running a deal and so I just printed it as a poster so it would be large enough for me to fit into the sign. Depending on the size that you're doing, just figure out how big you need it to be and you wanna make sure it's just a little bit bigger so you have room to trim it. Then once it's cut, I'm just mounting it to the wood with some double stick tape, super easy, and you've got this really pretty stand on its own or hang on the wall sign that is a fraction. I'm telling you, this was like, even with the print under 20 bucks and it's way less than the Kirkland's. And let's keep the Kirkland's train going here with this easy duped centerpiece. I grabbed some of these Easter eggs. You can find these at Walmart, Target. They are the ones that you can dye, but they are just plastic. And I started by just taking my little screwdriver and carefully popping holes in the bottom because I needed to add them to sticks. These are just some leftover cupcake sticks that I had from Finn's birthday last year. And then to adhere them on the inside, I just took a little bit of hot glue and stuck it up into the bottom of the egg. Then I just grabbed some floral foam I had on hand, stuck them in there so they wouldn't move on me, and then put them into a box. I'm taking a regular paintbrush and I'm just flicking the paint onto here to give them black speckles. Now, a lot of you told me to use a toothbrush last year, so I'll have to try that this year, but that is another idea. You can use an old toothbrush as well. Then I'm gonna take some floral foam and pop it into a box that I got from Michaels. You can also build your own. I've got a tutorial on how you can build your own, so I will share that as well. But this Michaels one is very affordable and you could just do it quickly. 
Then we're adding three Dollar Tree LED flameless candles because we're not trying to light anything on fire here, but we do want a nice glow. And then I'm taking my miter shears from Amazon. These things cut florals so nicely. And I'm adding some boxwood and lavender that I got from Walmart. That is one of my favorite places to get floral picks. Dollar Tree usually has a lot, but the Walmart quality for the price comparison, it's anywhere from 98 cents to $1.25 and you can't beat the Walmart picks for DIYs. Once all of my florals are where I want them, then I'm taking my little eggs and popping them in to that floral foam with the picks that I had before. Now you wanna get it in there so it looks like your egg is just suspended. You don't want the stick to stick out, ha, pun intended, too much. And you can tuck your greenery around that. I really love the colors here. And also you could easily just remove the eggs after Easter and leave this up all spring long, which I love longevity in a project. This is super pretty and compared to the hundred and some umpteen dollars that they wanted for the other one, this one comes in under 30 bucks, which is a great dupe and you can use it much longer than Easter. Another fun way to use those Easter DIY dyeable eggs is to create a garland. I decided to use all 12 of them and use a drill bit to carefully drill a hole on either side. That was going to allow me to string them up as a beaded strand or a garland. I flipped them all over, repeated the same thing on the other side, and then it was time to string them up. So I did that using my handy dandy dowel needle. This thing is my favorite. And I was able to use that to line it up so I could get the jute twine from one end of the egg to the other. You can get a pack of three of these on Amazon for a couple bucks. You could also get them in the embroidery aisle of your local craft store, but this is one of my must have craft items are these doll needles, especially for making strands and garlands. Now I just used some brown embroidery floss to string it up and to create the tassels, but you could use jute tine or whatever else. You're just gonna wanna make sure that your holes are the size of your twine or jute just so it will fit. Now I decided to add these fun Easter words, then the Ray Dunn font, which is called the skinny, but you could also just leave it plain and just have the beads plus the eggs. This egg wreath hanger was a huge winner last year. I got so many comments from you guys that you've loved it so much. So I'm excited to be able to share it again for those of you that missed it. I'm starting with a wreath form from Dollar Tree and some of this burlap that I got from Hobby Lobby, super clearance during fall time, but you can just do regular burlap. You can also do this by cutting up a drop cloth if you have one of those on hand. You just wanna cover it so you have a neutral base that is shaped like an Easter egg for this wreath. Once I wrapped the entire thing in burlap, I trimmed it and used hot glue to secure the ends. Then I had a bunny that I had stained for a different project that didn't work out for me. So I decided to add a little tail and then use some of these laser craft cut icons from Dollar Tree to add some embellishments. So the only thing to keep in mind with this is that it does have some like charring from when it got cut on the laser engraver. So it will get your fingers dirty, just FYI. It's just something you have to deal with with Dollar Tree cutouts. Once everything was painted, I added them around the neck of my bunny with some hot glue. And then I trimmed off a couple pieces of lavender also from Walmart just to add some color to the wreath. Once everything was adhered, I thought it could use a little welcome message. So I did every bunny welcome cut to the width of my bunny, stuck it down, and this was ready for my front door. You'll have to let me know down in the comments, were you one of the people that loved this last year and recreated it? I would love to know. This Kirkland's dupe was so fun to make. It is this cute little bunny butt garland. So I started with some felt as well as some pom-poms, both from Michaels, and I used my roll of masking tape, just something near me that I could use as a stencil, and cut out a circle. Now I took these larger pieces of felt and kind of doubled them up so I could get two pieces that were the same. I went ahead and folded it in quarters so that it saved some time when I was cutting. Now if you do have a Cricut maker, you could cut felt on that easily, but I wanted to give you a non-Cricut version to make it as well. 
Once I had all of my pieces cut out, I decided to do a brown, tan, and white sets of bunnies. And then I went through with some of the scrap and made ears for all of them. So you're going to need two circles and two ears per bunny. Then we're also going in and cutting two feet per bunny. It's kind of like a rounded triangle. And here is the look we're going for. So the first step to assembling our bunny is taking some hot glue, putting it all around the outside. And then we're gonna leave a little bit of a space so that I can stuff it. Now again, you could use whatever you've got here, tissue paper, cotton balls, extra fluff from pillows. You just want that circle to be nice and filled out so it looks like a little fuzzy bunny. Once that's all stuffed, you can add some glue and close it shut. Then I took my dowel needle, which I love to use for projects. I double knotted the end, and then I added some stitches to the bottom of each of the feet, just so it looked like the little bunny toes, essentially. I don't know if bunnies have toes. Bunnies feet, you know what I'm saying. Once you see it, you'll get the gist. Once I had my little lines where I wanted them, I tied it off on the back and trimmed it. Then I glued both of my feet as well as a little tail onto my bunny. And then I pinched the ends of my ears and then glued them onto the top. I repeated that for all of the different bunnies. And then to string them up, I use my dowel needle, which is just a long upholstery needle that I can use to string up garlands. And I popped it through the felt on the back so I could string them all up. Now this is such a cute garland, but you can also take the pieces individually and set them up next to a vase or a potted plant and it looks like a little bunny is hiding. I really wanted a nice large hoop wreath for our front door, but everywhere I went they were so expensive, so I decided, like I do, to make my own. I grabbed a variety of eucalyptus picks from Michaels because I liked the coloration of these versus the Walmart ones. And then while I was there, because they were having a sale on spring florals, I also grabbed some light, dusty rose peonies. I started by taking some jute twine and tying my pieces onto the wreath. I find with a hoop wreath like this, it makes it a lot easier to just tie it on with jute twine, which will then blend in versus trying to glue it or hook anything anywhere. I also used some smaller pieces of jute twine and tied the individual pieces where I wanted them so it looked like it really curved around the wreath. I repeated the same step with the second set of eucalyptus to make it look nice and full. And then I ended up hanging it up to add my flowers with hot glue, just so I could really see how it would look. These floral wreaths, you don't need to put a ton of time and effort into them. The greenery with the flower mix is perfect. I just had the four pieces of flowers. You could add more, you could add less. And this is another thing where if you wanna tie on the pink flowers, you could easily remove them and change them out for spring and summer. So with the mystery box last year, I got this little fence picket sign from Jamie and I decided to chop it up and make some little tags. Now, if you wanna make this project, you don't have to go through all of these steps. I was just challenged and I was bound and determined to make that happen, but you could easily just buy some little wood tags from places like Hobby Lobby or Michaels to do this. I ended up staining them, so if you get unfinished little tags, you can stain them too. And then I spray painted a bunch of those little ornaments white from Dollar Tree. I used some hot glue to stick them onto the tag and it was a very simple process after I got done having to like slice up my own tags, but they were super cute to add to little Easter baskets or you could put them in a tiered tray, tons of different options, but I thought these were so fun. You could add names to them or initials, but I love the white bunny stark against the stain color. And let's round it out with a fun Dollar Tree DIY that you could customize for whatever you would like. So I like to grab these trays from the craft section and stain them so I have them in my stash whenever I want to use them. The first way to use them is making a photo frame. So I just cut out Easter 2022 and I stuck that on to the bottom of this tray. This is essentially the bottom 
or back, however you want to look at it. But once I applied the wording, I added these cute little bunnies, added a little clip, plus a little carrot, and you could easily add whatever image you want onto there. I also finished it off with some jute twine to help hold the picture in, but this would be great for an Easter bunny photo, or you could also use it for a family photo on Easter. I like the trays because they sit up on their own and you would never guess it was a tray. It just looks like a solid piece of wood. Another option is to use it to create a sign. So I cut out welcome home, but omitted the O and home so that I could cut out a cute little bunny. So this is all just white vinyl. So welcome to our, and then H M E. And then I took some Buffalo check Dollar Tree vinyl cause I wanted to test it out. And I just cut out a simple little bunny shape. Now I had an issue with the vinyl coming up off the backer when I went to put it on my mat. So I just kind of smushed it down with my little uh, scraper tool. But once I got it stuck down, it was easy to cut out this little bunny shape. And then I just tied on a little bit of jute twine, also tied on another one of those little embellishments. I used it on everything last year. Like I seriously got so much bang out of my $1.25 purchase of the containers of little carrots and bunnies. And there you have it, super quick and easy. Add some florals or a cute little bunny and this is great for a little side table or a little vignette in your kitchen. Super fun, understated, only a couple dollars. That's gonna do it for this video. Be sure, before you leave, to head down and leave a comment of your favorite project. I wanna know which one do you like that helps inform future videos for me. And also be sure you are subscribed so you don't miss any future spring and Easter content as well as so many other things. Coming up this year, I'm gonna have a lot of house projects, wood builds, Cricut tutorials, Dollar Tree stuff, all the things you've grown to know and love and also some fun new series I'm ready to launch. Be sure to let me know what you're most excited for and I'll catch you in the next one. Happy crafting, bye.